What's up, Yup Gang? It's your boy Taxon, and welcome back to Yup DBSD Things. And today we're going over another very exciting battle, guys. This is going to be round two of our local this week. This is going to be Bardock's Crew versus SS4 Goku and Vegeta. But before we get into it, guys, I do want to say if you guys are wanting custom mats and or sleeves, absolutely check out Pro Mats, guys. This is the best place to go get your custom card needs. Links in the description below for you guys to go check it out. And also, before we dive in, I am trying to grow my Discord community as much as possible. So if you guys are going to search for a community where you can come check out the card reveals every single day, ask for an untap and or webcam battle, or generally just ask some card questions, this is the place for you. So I will leave the link below for you guys to go check it out. And with that being said, guys, if you guys enjoyed this battle or my content in general, remember to hit all those buttons for me, like, comment, subscribe, remember to hit that bell too. And with that being said, let's turn this around and dive in. And one more thing to add, guys, I am trying to give out a bunch of TPs and judge packs and random revision packs and things like that that I've collected over time. So I will be doing this every single week. I'll give out three to five of these packs on my live streams, on my uh, Tuesday live streams, uh, Tuesday testings, of course. So make sure if you guys want a chance to win any of these TPs, you do stop by for next week and any week after that for a chance to win some of these TPs. And for a brief second, I will leave a picture up of what the prizes are so that you are a little bit more swayed into stopping by. With that being said guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And here we are with round two of the locals guys. We have SS4, Goku and Vegeta on the right side versus Bardock's crew on the left. Starting off we have Goku Vegeta starting charging himself a Goku and then passing turn. No one dropped the play. Going into Bardock's turn one here. Charges himself a uh, Borgos I believe and then discards a Fasha. This Fasha is just a top five search. Grab any, grab any four or less Bardock's crew or a Unison. Here we're gonna see the one energy investment for the one drop Bardock's crew. We're gonna trigger our leader to draw a card and then top five search for a Unison or it's basically the same effect as the Fasha. Top five for a four cost or less Bardock's crew or a Unison, and then we pass turn back over to Goku trying to slow down his awakening a step because of course he does get closer to his awakening every single time he combos. So we did not swing that turn. Going into turn two, we did see the turn two for Goku Vegeta there. All he did really is pay one for the Goku, drew a card on play, swing with his leader, comboed it off, drew a card off the Goku, and then top three searched with the leader. Turn two for the Bardock's crew, we're going to see yet, uh, yet another Fasha discard, top five search. It looks like here we're going to see the Shugash. Uh, looks like that is officially the fourth name that Bardock will be needing here. So we just need to play that card, trigger our leader, and then we will be able to awaken. So here we're going to see the Unison play. Unison auto plays a one drop Bardock's crew. Auto on the, and then switches it to rest mode. Auto on the Unison, when you switch one of your Bardock's crew to rest mode, you get the uh, untap, or not untap, you get the uptick on your Unison and the draw card. Leader auto would proc as well, since you played a Bardock's crew, you draw a card. And then the Shuggish auto would proc as well, since you played it, you draw a card. Since we officially have four of the Bardox crew in every single area, we will awaken the leader and then start swinging. We swing 10k with the Bardock first, 15k with the unison, and now we're going in with the leader. Of course, if we uh, swing with the leader, we do get the combo from the drop, so it's basically a free Z charge. So that's a 20k attack. SS4 Goku Vegeta takes that as well. Choosing not to combo out of any of those attacks, so it looks like he will have to do his own... Uh, get, either get to 4 life during his turn or charge himself a uh, SS4 Vegeta during his turn. So Bardock opting not to play another uh, Bardock's crew to trigger his leader's backside once again and just passing over to uh, Vegeta and Goku. So we have turn three, we see the charge, we see the one energy investment for the Vegeta, auto on play, draw a card, switch it to Wrath, and then of course we're going to see the leader swing directly after that. Of course we're going to see the Vegeta get comboed off, trigger the leader's auto, top three search, grab whatever you need, looks like here you grab the Borgos, we're going to see the Vegeta auto as well, draw a card. And it looks like we're going to do the pseudo-arrival Goku. Come and play Give That Boy, or play a Double Striker. After the battle step, we're going to see the Z awaken. That attack was directed at the unison. So here we are seeing the SS4 Goku and Vegeta, 
Or not Goku and Vegeta. But just the Go SS4 Goku is swinging at the unison once again, trying to get that double strike to go through and kill the unison. It looks like Bardock's going to use his power of the Super Saiyan here uh, to negate the attack so the unison can stay alive. Not only does this uh, use his power of the Super Saiyans early, but it does set up his... Uh, it does set up his Mecha Frieza, so now he has an extra card in his energy and an extra card in the drop, so we are set up for Mecha. So it did do a little something, and it also saved the Unison. Didn't get the full value of what the card is normally used for, so uh, that's a little upsetting, but that's fine. We're going to see the two energy investment uh, for the Unison here. We're going to see the uptick, play. Oh wait, it looks like we forgot to use the auto. Auto on play, top, five, or top three search for any red card. Here he's choosing his Vegeta Super Combo. Here he's using the uptick on the unison to play the SS4 Goku. It gets played, draws a card, combos off. He swings with the unison, then combos it off and draws another card, and then passes turn back over to Bardock. Uh, the attack from the unison was directed at Bardock's unison as well, so the unison on his side did go down to one marker. Turn three for Bardock here. We'll see what he can do. Looks like we're starting off with the leader swing. We're going to get the combo out of the drop. Uh, basically just a free Z charge. Swinging with the 10k at the unison once again. Looks like we're baiting the homicidal clones there. These guys of course, if you basically meet your leader's awakening condition, all your one drops are 10k's. So now we're swinging with the leader, 15k to the unison, and now we're going to go 10k at the unison once again. We're going to combo a Toro. The unison does go down to 1 here, and then of course the Toro goes to the drop area, and then it's auto kicks to pay 1 and play it from the drop after combo. Here we're going to see it come into play. We're going to use the Bardock leader effect to rest it, and then KO one of our opponent's rested battle cards, and then auto on that Toro will go off, and it just untaps after being switched to rest mode by your, uh, by your own skill. And now we're going to see if we decide to use the blocker skill or if we just go in for that last attack at the at the unison and possibly possibly get rid of it. Here we are debating on if we use the backside of the leader's effect to draw a card when we play the Bardock's crew. Um, I am the one piloting the Bardock's crew, so I literally said I should have remembered if I did or not, and if I didn't, I'll see when I uh, record the video. And here, of course, uh, we see that I didn't, but of course I wanted to be a fair player and not just draw an extra card just in case I already did, so I just left it be. Swing with the tour at the unison. Of course, the unison dies. Now we're going in double strike for game. Or not for game, I'm sorry. I got super distracted just looking at how shiny the Bardock's field is. I really apologize about the glare, guys. I do have to find a way to get better angles for the camera here at our locals just to get better quality videos for you guys. So after Bardock devotes his entire turn into the field in the unison of SS4 Goku and Vegeta, he passes turn, and then Goku and Vegeta uses his turn 4 just to reestablish the SS4 Gogeta unison once again. So we'll see the leader swing. We're going to see the play of the of the Vegeta. Vegeta gets uh, drawn, and then he combos it off, gets another draw that way. Here we see the plus effect from the unison. Play another one, draw. Swing with the, swing with the uh, unison, it looks like he's swinging at one of the battle cards here. It looks like he's debating to do it at the, at the Borgos. Here we're going to do Mecha Frieza to try to stop whatever else he has here. We want to keep our board state as big as possible and just try to stay ahead of SS4 Goku and Vegeta uh, and do as much damage as possible before he gets to his boss threats because of course this deck has a very good high end. Uh, Goku Vegeta passes his turn here with two energy up. Of course since he didn't get to a, get to a combo step with that Vegeta uh, or with that Unison he kind of combo off that Vegeta so the auto removes him at the end of the turn which is pretty pretty balanced if you do ask me. Here we're on turn 4 for Bardock here, sitting at 6 life still. It looks like we're going to use the leader effect first to rest a Bardock's crew. 
uh, and then KO nothing. The Bardock's crew will be rested, just untapped, and then basically just triggered the auto on the unison to uptick and draw a card. We do swing with the dual attacker first, and we get imposing presence. That guy does get minus 10k, so now he's sitting at 10k because he is only at 20. But we do have a big field here to attempt to go in. It looks like we're swinging with the unison, getting minus to 5 by imposing, and then comboing off of Bardock. So it looks like we're going to choose to charge that to Z uh, Zenkai. Swinging with the Mecha Frieza, get minus 5, choosing to combo off yet another one drop from the field to... Uh, to be able to not only get the damage through to the unison because we are bombarding the unison uh, but uh, but to charge the energy as well to set up some plays for later here we're gonna see the one energy investment for the double striker uh, ape guys this guy I believe this one KOs something in rest mode with its activate main that plays it and then of course it has the same exact auto just like the other three cost or higher apes if it's rested by your skill you just untap it So here we're going to see the double strike directed to the unison. It does get minus 5, but it stays at 15 because it is a 20k. So we will see. We'll see, us, see if SS4 decides to save it. It looks like he just lets it die there. Doesn't want to use all of his uh, negates and defensive uh, pieces in hand in order to keep the unison alive but to save them for labor and uh, for later in order to keep himself alive which is uh, nice here Bardock looks like he's thinking about making some plays here <laughs> it looks like we're gonna do one energy and a one energy and one Z energy for the SSB Vegeta promotional uh, Zenkai card his auto when he gets played is you just bottom deck a card from your hand you choose up to one card in your life and add it to your hand and then you get the draw card so he is pretty nice he is a cycle cycle one draw one which is cool and of course having that self awakens nice Bardock here really just doing that to put himself into Frieza reinforcements range just so we have a little bit more defense just in case uh, he doesn't uh, just in case we just need it, honestly. So we're going into turn 5 for Goku and Vegeta here. We'll see if this is a turn we see a boss monster or not. Here now he's staring down this board and needs to figure out a way to clear it. Of course Gogeta is the answer. But if he does the Gogeta, he will have to tap one energy to play something first so that he can tap himself out so that he can go all the way up into the Z leader so that he doesn't have to lose the 8 drop next turn. Or he just doesn't do the Z leader and lets the, lets the card go away anyways. So here we are discussing this card. Of course it dis uh, skips your defense step a lot. But this doesn't. This uh, isn't gonna tap him out, and he has. And he has uh, one. He'll have one energy up, so of course he'll have to use. A floodgate of some sort, in order to. Uh, you know, do the do. Get himself tapped out in order to uh, become 100k. I'm sorry, guys. I'm very interested in this battle. I'm very zoned out while I'm watching it, so it's making it almost hard to commentate. Swinging with his leader before he does the 8 drop play. It looks like that he's choosing not to go that route. Probably has a better idea of wanting to leave himself with more options and lines of defense uh, to deal with this big old board. Maybe he thought that clearing the board wasn't going to be enough going into a turn 5 for Bardock. Especially when he's at 5 life. Even if he did get the triple strike throw, it really would have only put him to 2. And he would have had to rely on a... Uh, on a on some type of overrun more than likely to get that last uh, damage in after the leader swing. So here instead of the big Gogeta play, it looks like he's going into the 8 drop Gogeta play. This is going to get rid of both both of the main ape threats on the field, which is huge. Gets rid of the dual attack and the double striker. And then of course this card provides a 
double striker as well, and then a bean to his leader for the whole duration of Bardock's next turn, which is crazy, especially if you pair that with the rare SS4 Goku that came out in this set, which is just absolutely nasty, because if you do that, you just combo that, and then you just get to have a bean on your leader for the entire turn, which is crazy. Here, going into Bardock's turn, 5 here, starting off his turn with a swing. It's just a swing of an ape, just to get that in rest mode so that he has to swing at it with his battle cards next turn. Of course, uh, if you notice here, Goku and Vegeta didn't swing with his big A-drop. If you notice, he did that on purpose, more than likely to try to avoid the Bardock leader effect from killing one of his cards in rest mode. So trying to leave it an active, maybe stop Bardock's turn and going into his next turn where he can drop even more bigger boss monsters and then still have that on board, which is would be absolutely crazy. So here we are set up for quite a bit, quite a few different lines of action. He is, uh, we do have Bardock under imposing once again. This card is basically just going to get played to trigger the leader's effect. This is the double strike ape, of course. He's using his leader effect to rest it and then uh, uptick his unit, basically just uptick the unison and draw a card because his dude is not in rest mode and obviously we don't have the dual attacker ape that can switch that card to rest mode to our, so that we can ma utilize the leader effect and actually kill it. So a little bit of RNG luck there for Bardock not being able to have those cards in hand when he needed them to give it to the boss monster. And with that being said, being under imposing, he just didn't have much else he could do unless he really wanted to start absolutely firing off his entire field. Especially considering his leader was already a 20k with the 5k buff from the uh, red black OG to the last turn. So every five, every time I swing, I get minus 5 and I'm already bursting a leader that's already 5k more than most of my attacks. So that's something we don't want to have to deal with, so we just pass turn. Here we're going to see the one energy investment for the Goku. Of course the Goku comes out, he does get the draw. And then of course if he ends up comboing it off at any point this turn, he does get the draw again. Here swinging with his leader. Getting his leader draw, probably searching for different boss monsters. So here we see the one energy investment for Broly Crown. He's going into his hand, yanking the cooler counter counter from his hand. Pretty smart play because it looks like he's lining up to make a very defensive play. He's looking at hand knowledge here. Probably noticing that he can't make his uh, super, super aggressive plays. So he's grabbing out whatever he can to stop his opponent from making any further play or further plays. So here he uses two Broly Crowns back to back and takes a Mecha Frieza and a Cooler Counter Counter. And that is that there is crazy enough. That's, that's wild. Two energy investment. Got rid of two very, very important cards for Bardock. And then, of course, we're going to go swinging in with the big Gogeta. This is a 30k double strike. We do combo off the uh, Goku from field, and then we use the pseudo arrival effect from the Vegeta. The Vegeta does get the minus 15 something on play, so he does go ahead and uh, minus the Mecha Frieza that was in play. We do see the activation of a Realm of Gods resting uh, the Vegeta and the Broly Crown in play, and then we use uh, Bergamo to tap out Vegeta or Goku Vegeta as much as possible, leaving him with one energy, putting him into a predicament where if he was planning on using something like Topo, which he may not, he uh, will have to tap himself and out in order to use a uh, Violent Razor, King Vegeta's imposing presence once again. So here we're starting off the turn, leader effect, rest the ape, KO the big multicolor 8 drop, trigger the unison to uptick and draw card, trigger the ape to untap, swinging in with the double strike at the leader. This is more than likely at the leader, and if it, if not, it's at the battlefield so that he can't be so that he can't combo them off. So it looks like we do see Pan hit the play here, and what a what a great setup that SS4 Goku and Vegeta did for this turn using two Broly crowns, not only to stop 
uh, take out some of the defense for uh, uh, Bardock by taking his Mecha Frieza, but also taking his Cooler Counter Counter so that he was safe to use his SER this turn. That is a very, very good play there. Here we're moving into the next attack. It looks like we're going 15k with the Mecha Frieza at the leader. Looks like he just combos off. Or I apologize. It looks like we we specifically comboed off to make that attack a little bit stronger. Which forced uh, the Goku Vegeta player to combo up a little bit more. Here we're gonna use the Fasha to discard top five search for just about any just about any ape or one cost for less Bardock's crew. And then the unison as well. Here we can't even tell what I grabbed because the camera is absolutely terrible. It looks like it's the double strike ape that we grabbed. Looks like we're going to pay one and play it. We we did it last turn so the limit one effect is uh, reset so we get to use it again once again this turn. Uh, here we paid one for the... Uh, here, here we paid one for the attempt of the Z-Wake and realized we were at 4 life and couldn't even uh, do that yet. Also, we have that Z-Card on field, which is unique, so we can't even self-awaken ourselves right now. Down to a 3-life uh, span, which kind of sucks. So, we are just going to start resting Cardboard and trying to do some damage. There was the Leader Swing. Of course, we combo out uh, a Barlux Crew from the drop area and then charge it to the Z-Energy. And then we just pass turn with about five energy open in a, quite the board state. So this is probably the turn you'll see Gogeta want to use his go big Gogeta if 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 now is it it's either now or never I believe. He does have a little bit of hand knowledge. Of course, Bardock did do a, quite a few draws last turn, so he's looking at maybe three new cards in his hand compared to what he knew from his Broly crowns last turn. Here, starting off with the 40k leader swing, or not leader swing, secret rare swing. Pan going in, and then of course, we're going to see the activation of the SS4 rare Goku, or Vegeta to go find a get Goku from the drop area, or from the deck. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Here we're going to see the Pan's effect, pay one energy, take one of your opponent's battle cards, absolutely snapped, and that card was already inactive, so he gets basically a one energy double strike. Here we're going to pay one energy for a Tora and negate the attack. An auto goes off where you may choose a card in your hand and discard it and if you do, your opponent cannot attack your opponent's battle cards cannot attack your leader cards for the turn unless they switch one of their active mode cards to rest mode, which is like not good not good at all. So we only we only run a few of this card and we basically only use it as a hard negate because it does draw us a card if we haven't played a Bardock's crew yet on our opponent's turn. So here we're seeing the leader swing afterwards. Draw a card off the auto, play the Vegeta draw a card, combo it off, draw a card, and then arrival the kicking Goku. Here we're going to see the activation of a Realm of God com uh, Kamehameha, Go Kame Goku Kamehameha. This is going to rest the uh, pseudo arrival Goku that he just played and then also be able to play the Poutine as well because he did rest a card with one of his skills. So now, of course, Goku Vegeta has to play around the Poutine skill. Of course, here we see the unison, so that makes that very, very easy. Play the unison, uptick on it, free play a one drop that triggers Poutine. So now he can play just about anything he wants. Looks like here, swinging in with the unison. It looks like here Bardock may have to go to three. This might be the uh, time to do it. It looks like here we're going to see the two in, uh, two combos going into Divine Presence, giving him himself 5k. And it does look like we did combo that one Vegeta, so it does look like we are set up to possibly tap ourselves out and then do a full uh, dual attack leader into the 100k, which is very likely. Unison here is at 20, 25, 35. We take it, go down to three. It looks like we're planning on doing the Z Awaken this turn because we probably just need that extra 5k.
Here, of course, the Divine Presence swinging in. He leaves it at 25k, so we're going to use the Leader Effect, or Leader Z Awaken. And we're going to combo the Tora off from field, trigger the lead, uh, Z Awaken Leader to draw a card. And then we're going to use a Super Combo to get over that 25k. That puts us to 35, and then we choose to Z Charge the Super Combo, put the Tora in the drop. Of course, that option there is a little, a little bit good if you consider the fact that the auto on the uh, Bardock 8 drop uh, grabs four different Bardock names from your drop area. So it's nice just to make sure that you have specific uh, specific Bardocks in the drop. So here it looks like he's really going in. He put that at, he's already at a 25, 35, uh, 45 single strike. It looks like we comboed the Bardock, Tora, uh, the Bardock crew, Tora, Ape, the three drop. This guy's a blocker, and you play him for one after you combo him. So we basically comboed him there, and then took the damage just, and then just, re and then played him so that we had a blocker for his next attack. But it looks like we uh, got outplayed, and then of course the overwhelm comes out right after we decided to do uh, to do that, and then warps. Uh, And then he warps uh, warps the blocker, swings with the 30k, and then combos up really high. It looks like we're trying to get uh, get his opponent down to one life so that we can go ahead and, of course, do the Z leader play like I was talking about earlier, how he uh, untapped it. He's doing a dual attack type of dual, uh, deal. Very spicy, honestly. So it looks like here we're trying our best to combo out of this because if we can't combo out of this attack, it means we definitely lose the game because the 100k Z leader will kill us if we don't have a negate in hand. So it looks like we have to use two cards from field and then two super combos from hand. Uh, generating SS4, Goku, and Vegeta a lot of value because, uh, of course, if you don't have super combos in hand when they play the boss monster, you're more than likely just taking three damage to the face. So here we do out combo. Alright, 20, 30, 40, 50. I, I don't even know what I, I, don't, I can't even I can't even keep up with myself in that. I do, of course, I do do these in... I do do these in two times speed, so it is kind of hard to keep up sometimes when I'm commentating. So I do apologize if sometimes it sounds like I'm uh, like kind of tripping over my words. And here it does look like uh, SS4, Goku, and Vegeta scoops because they do know it's over. We're given the Gohan. We're dropping the Gohan next turn, having triple attack uh, unison, and then of course going 5k on the leader, which is huge. And then we're three cards away from the secret as well. Hope you guys enjoyed it, guys. Bardock took this W. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.